In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to use the zero product principle to solve equations. And here it is. If a times b equals zero, then we know one thing about a and b. Either a equals zero or b equals zero. The only way you can multiply two numbers together and have them equal zero is if one of the numbers is zero. We can use this really simple idea to solve equations that are in factored form. So here's one. It looks like the left side has already been factored and it's equal to zero. Now it's very important for it to be equal to zero because we can't use the zero product principle unless we have the whole equation equal to zero. So if x minus 3 times x plus 7 equals zero, then one of these numbers must be zero. Either x minus 3 is zero or x plus 7 is zero. Now if we solve x minus 3 equal to zero and we add 3 to both sides, then the left side will be x and the right side will be 3. So we find x equals 3. And if we solve x plus 7 equals 0 by subtracting 7 from both sides, then we'll get x equals negative 7. So that gives us two solutions, x equals 3 and x equals negative 7. And notice how I have the solutions in brackets. These are these little curly braces you see sometimes. Um, not parentheses, not square brackets, but we must use the curly braces. And that's because if we use parentheses or brackets, it begins to look like interval notation. But interval notation means all the numbers between the first one and the second one, where here we only want to specify these two numbers as solutions. That's why we need the braces. Also, notice that our equation had two solutions. There will be a solution for each factor in the problem. And also I want to remind you that we absolutely must have zero here. Any other number will not work because no other number has this multiplication principle where if two numbers are multiplied together and they equal zero, we know one of the numbers is zero. No other number can do that. So let's solve a few of these together. The first one says 3x minus 4 times x plus 5 equals 0. So if 3x minus 4 times x plus 5 equals 0, one of these parentheses must be 0. If 3x minus 4 is 0, we get one answer. And if x plus 5 is 0, we get another answer. So now let's solve this little equation here. We will add 4 to both sides. That will leave us 3x equals 4. Then we'll divide both sides by 3. That will leave us x equals 4 over 3. For the second little equation, we'll subtract 5 from both sides, and that will leave us x equals negative 5. So our two solutions are 4 thirds and negative 5. For the second equation, we have 2x minus 1 times x minus 8 equals 0. If 2x minus 1 equals 0, we get one answer. And if x minus 8 equals 0, we'll get the other answer. So to solve 2x minus 1 equals 0, we will add 1 to both sides. That will give us 2x equals 1. Now we will divide both sides by 2. And that will give us x equals 1 half. For the other equation, we will add 8 to both sides and that will give us x equals 8. So our two solutions are 1 half and 8. For our third equation, we have 5x plus 6 times x plus 9 equals 0. If this times this equals 0, one of our parentheses must be 0. So if 5 plus, 5x plus 6 is 0, we'll get one answer. And if x plus 9 is 0, we'll get the other answer. So to solve this first equation, we'll subtract 6 from both sides. That will give us 5x equals negative 6. Divide both sides by 5. That will give us x equals negative 6 over 5. Now for x plus 9 equals 0, if we subtract 9 from both sides, we'll get x equals negative 9. And our two solutions are negative 6 over 5 and negative 9.